Hello, Catholic friends. I'm going to be pretty careful with my wording here in this video because I know that the vast majority of Catholics have really good intentions, but sometimes y'all say things that can be interpreted as snarky by us ex-Catholics. Let's just jump into it. I'm going to split this video into three parts, the first of which is how not to talk to ex-Catholics. Second, we'll talk about a better way, and then third, we'll talk about the best way. Remember when I said that the vast majority of Catholics have good intentions? I don't think that everyone does, and here is an example of somebody who might not. When are you going to go back to Catholicism and admit to yourself that the secular lifestyle is empty, pointless, and incorrect? I can tell that you still want to be Catholic. I don't think that I need to explain why this is not an effective way to win hearts or minds or convince somebody. No arguments are made here. It's literally just, come on, I know you want to, alongside an insinuation that my life is empty or pointless. You, commenter, are free to think that my life is empty and pointless. I, however, do not, and I also don't care about your opinion of the emptiness of my life. I would like to say one positive thing about this approach, though. I do try to see the good in everything. And that would be that this commenter, along with other Catholics who take a similar approach, I think some of them at least still desire the best for me. It's possible that this commenter's motives here are actually good. That he desires that I do not spend eternity in hell. So I want to recognize at least the possibility of good intentions here, but I, I, I will mention that the goodness here is not unique to this approach, and there are other much better approaches that still incorporate that same possibility for good intentions, and I think that those other approaches are less abrasive. If I were to grade this approach, I would give it a D. Second, I would like to talk about a much better option. A, a much, much better option not a perfect option in my opinion. I call this option the welcome home or the come home option. There are better and worse ways to use the welcome home approach, and I'm actually going to let the Trad Men podcast featuring Integrated with Angela demonstrate this because they do it in a really good way, probably the best way that anybody could use this approach. Kevin, I gotta tell you something, bud. I've been listening to you, you type these comments out, and I don't know how to tell you this, but you're gonna become Catholic again. So you strap in. Come home. You're gonna become Catholic again. We want you back. We miss you. The whole thing has this weird way of like not letting go. Once, once, once you you can tell that you're open to the truth and that you're 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 committed to, you know, that which is true. He's got this really annoying way of just like staying after you and never like letting go. Um, you know, God is a loving father like that. And, mm. um, I, I, I don't know, I, I can hear it. I've seen this, I've seen this type of, uh, language before. And, uh, and if you're well, hanging, I mean, if you're hanging I... out with us, you're, you're in the best of company, <laughs> you know, you're seeking. And I think that's awesome. So what did the trad men and Angela do right? Well, first they were really nice and friendly. They seemed excited at the idea of me joining their tribe. And that's cool, of course. I want to feel welcomed or, or wanted. And clearly, just like the first approach, I can tell that all, all three of the people uh, on the screen desired my ultimate good. But option two here avoids the abrasiveness that was found in option one. If I were to grade this approach, I, I would give it an A-. minus. But why not an A+. Plus? What's wrong with this approach? Well, I actually told Angela and the trad men a little bit later in this podcast that the platitude welcome home kind of rubs me the wrong way. And it rubs me the wrong way because, and I, I know you don't all mean it this way, but it comes across as a little bit condescending. When you say come home, it sounds a lot to me like, hey, I've got this all figured out. And when you've got this figured out, you'll join me you'll realize that I was right all along. It smells a little bit like hubris to me, like a form of theistic Gnosticism. Not Gnosticism like the early Christian heresy, Gnosticism like agnosticism without the A, like having perfect knowledge. I think that it implies that there is a decision to be made here, 
as if I can control my belief in hylomorphism, for example. I can choose to go home, to, to visit the town that I grew up in, anytime that I want, even in my compatibilistic understanding of free will. But I can't choose to just become convinced that the Catholic Church is the one true church. I can't just, to harp on uh, hylomorphism again, I can't just choose to accept hylomorphism. I don't believe that hylomorphism is veridical. And it will take evidence or something to convince me that hylomorphism is true. It will take evidence or something else to convince me that the Catholic Church is true. If you doubt that belief is a choice, I'll invite you to believe right now that the earth is flat. You probably can't do it. Why? Because you're convinced that the earth is round. And that's why I don't like the welcome home analogy. It implies that there's some kind of choice to be made. And, and as far as I can tell, there is no choice that can be made here. So what would the best option be? I do suppose that this would vary from person to person, but I'll give you my answer. I would much prefer a more humble approach. Instead of come home, I would prefer something like, hey, it's super cool that you're still searching, that you're being open-minded, and obviously I think that I'm correct, and I think it would be super cool if you agreed with me. I honestly believe that if you die with your current set of beliefs, then your eternal salvation would be at risk. And because I desire the best for you, I hope that you wind up coming to the same conclusion that I did. It's possible that I'm wrong, but I currently think that I'm right. And because I think that I'm right, and because I desire the best for you, I hope that you agree with me. See, you don't have to lie about your desires. You can be super upfront about your desire for me to agree with you. That's totally cool. But you'll get bonus points if you admit that you're not 100% certain about your beliefs, but that you're convinced enough that you want me to agree with you because you think that that's in my best interest. This comes across to me as much more honest and maybe less cocky. For these reasons, I grade option three higher than option two. I'll, I'll give it an A+. Hopefully this will help all of you Catholics have more productive and better conversations with the non-Catholics and ex-Catholics in your life. Catholics, what are your opinions about my opinions? Let me know in the comments down below.